Welcome to this lecture. Our today's topic is solving some numerical problems related to motion in two dimension. We are already aware about the projectile motion, which is one of the cases of motion in two dimension. In the previous lectures, we have derived expressions for three quantities related to the motion of a projectile which is fired with respect to horizontal at an angle theta. So if this is the initial velocity V0, this is angle of projection. We have three quantities related to this motion, Y maximum, which is the maximum height, range, which is distance between point of launching and point of landing, and the total time which this projectile spends in air called as time of flight t. The expressions for these three quantities, the range y maximum and time of flight are, so time of flight is twice v0 sin theta divided by g y maximum also called as height is equal to v0 square sin square theta divided by 2g and range is twice v0 square sin theta cos theta divided by g. In uh, situations where sometimes given the values of theta or v0 and g, uh, g for sake of uh, convenient calculation we may take it as 10 meter per second square otherwise you can use it as 9.8 also. So normally in certain numerical problems, theta is given, uh, g is known to us, v0 is given. We are asked to determine the time of flight, y maximum and range. Or sometimes y maximum or range are given and you have to find the value of v0 and theta. So we go to solve the first problem on uh, this type of uh, situation where we are given the values of theta, we are given the value of g and we are given the initial velocity and we are supposed to determine the value of other quantities. So let's see the problem. A baller throws a ball with a speed of 20 meter per second at an angle of 30 degree with respect to the horizontal. Ignore air resistance. Calculate the maximum height reached by the ball, time taken by ball to come back to the same horizontal level. Same horizontal level here means ground. Distance from baller where the ball hits the ground and you are given that g is equal to 10 meter per second square. Let's solve this problem. So we are given the value of v0 to be equal to 20 meter per second. This is initial velocity, 20 meter per second. We are given the value of theta to be equal to 30 degree. And we have to find the values of time of flight, y maximum and range. Let's substitute the values. We get the result. So we have for time of flight, time taken by projectile or ball to go from baller's hand back to the ground. So this will be 2 into 20 into sine of 30 degree divided by g. The value of g is given to be 10 meter per second square. You can also take 9.8 but here for making simplification of uh, calculations we are using 10. So that way your answer will be this is 2. So sine 30 degree is 1 by 2. So this will be 4 into 1 by 2 that means the time of flight is 2 seconds. Next is we have to calculate the maximum height reached by the ball. So y maximum or h would be, so y maximum would be v0 square that is 20 square into sin square theta sin 30 degree whole square divided by 2 into 10. So that is 20 into 20 into 1 by 2 squared becomes 1 by 4 divided by 20. So 20 and 20 cancels that way 
the answer is 5 meter is the second answer. Similarly, we can find range. Range is given by R is equal to 2 into 20 square multiplied by sin 30 degree into cos 30 degree divided by G. G is 10 in this case. So this would be uh, 2 into 400 into 1 by 2 into cos 30 degree is root 3 by 2. So root 3 by 2 divided by 10. That gives you, so this will be 800, 800 multiplied by root 3 divided by 2 into 2 is 4, 4 into 10, that is 40. So that becomes 20 root 3. Here we get the values of root 3, so it is 20 into 1.732, that is equal to, so we have 20 into 1.732, so that is 34.64 meters. So this is how we can solve such problems. If you have maximum range, the maximum range is acquired if the angle of projection is uh, uh, 45 degree. You can also get the value of For that, you will have to project it at an angle of 45 degree. If there is a value of G, or a V0 different, or a theta value different, you should not have any You should be able to solve. Sometimes it is given that if a projectile motion is like this, where height or maximum, y maximum is equal to range. So, you can equate these two equations and you can get the values in that case. You can theta or v0. So, this is variety of problems you can do on this basis. Next problem now. A stone is dropped from state of rest into a well of depth 33 meter. Find the time after which splash of stone hitting water is heard. Given that the velocity of sound in air is 330 meter per second. In this case, you understand there are two types of motion now. A stone drop from state of rest into well will be a free fall. Once the stone hits the water underneath, sound will be produced. Now sound will be traveling upwards from the surface of water to the listener as a uniform motion. So, a mixed motion which can be the result of a certain situation. So, a mixed motion. Let's solve this problem. Let's assume that this is the well in which water lies at a depth h below the top. So, the value of H is given to us, it is 33 meters. Then we have the velocity of sound which is 330 meter per second. We will drop the stone, just on the stone could drop here, this relation will be useful because stone is going to fall freely under the influence of gravity. Now initially the stone is at rest, so u ki value jo hai, wo 0 di hai. So I can say that while falling, jo uska free fall hai, h will be equal to 1 by 2 gt square. From here I can calculate ki time taken for the fall, that is t square, is equal to 2h divided by g or t is equal to root of 2h divided by g. So, this is the part of motion ka, that the stone has fallen to the surface of water covering a distance h or starting from initial state of rest that is u is equal to 0 meter per second. Now, when splash par hota hai, when the stone hits water and a sound is produced, this sound travels upwards. And this sound will cover distance cover karega, jo stone cover kiya tha. Let's say ki time taken by the sound to cover the distance h is t dash. Now this motion of sound 
is simply a motion of uniform type that means time will be equal to distance divided by speed distance covered by it is h its speed throughout was v v is given to be 330 meter per second so your total time is puri process mein lagega that total time will be equal to t plus t dash that way our answer will come as agar main total time ko t kahu ya t <coughs> capital t max ko kahu so this capital t would be equal to t plus t dash that is root of root of 2 h by g plus now t dash is h by v we give values to h so we have root of 2 into h ki value hame di hui hai it is 33 divided by g ki value mein tell le raha hu for sake of simplicity aap 9.8 se bhi kar sakte ho so divided by 10 plus h ki value jo hamare paas hai that is 33 divided by 330 so this becomes root of ye ho jayega 66 divided by 10 that is 6.6 plus 33 divided by 330 will be 1 by 10 that is 0.1 a root of 6.6 comes out to be so we have root of 6.6 that is equal to 2.56 2.569 plus 0.1 if i take this roughly 2.57 plus 0.1 so the answer comes out to be 2.67 सो बी प्रिपेयर्ड कि अगर कभी भी आपको एक ऐसी प्रॉब्लम मिले जहां पर दो पार्ट्स मोशन के हैं एक पार्ट यूनिफॉर्म है एक पार्ट एक यूनिफॉर्मली एक्सलरेटेड या थ्री फॉल है दिस इज पॉसिबल और आप अलग अलग तरीके से इनको डील कर सकते हैं एंड गेट द आंसर और गेट द सोल्यूशन नाउ नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम इज अ बॉल इज ड्रॉप फ्रॉम द टॉप ऑफ टॉवर ऑफ हाइट फिफ्टी मीटर फ्रॉम स्टेट ऑफ रेस्ट Calculate the time taken by ball to reach the ground. Assume no air resistance. Again, you see that this is also a uniformly accelerated motion. Where the body is in the state of free fall, and in that state of free fall, it covers a certain distance of 50 meter. We have to solve the time. Let's solve. 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 A height of 50 meter. The ball is dropped vertically downwards. Or this motion is a one-dimensional motion now, and this one-dimensional motion has an acceleration that is g downwards. Or the ball has. Or this formula applied. Kya ja sakta is par s is equal to u t plus half of a t square. I can replace s with h. H is equal to in this case. जो यहाँ पर बॉल है इट वाज इनिशियली एड्रेस्ड यू की वैल्यू जीरो है तो दिस विल बी जीरो इनटू टी प्लस वन बाई टू इन प्लेस ऑफ ए आई हैव जी दैट इज एक्सलरेशन दैट इज वन बाई टू जी टी स्क्वेयर दैट वे हाइट एच दिया हुआ फिफ्टी सो फिफ्टी इज इक्वल टू वन बाई टू जी टी स्क्वेयर टाइम निकालना है तो दिस वुड बी हंड्रेड इक्वल टू या हंड्रेड डिवाइडेड बाई जी इक्वल टू टी स्क्वेयर विच मीन्स t square is equal to 100 divided by मैं g के वैल्यू 10 ले रहा हूँ, so that is 10 और t square is equal to 10. Now t becomes equal to under root of 10 and under root of 10 you can find to be equal to. <coughs> so it comes out to be 3.162. So this is 3.162 seconds. दिस योर आंसर और इसक में अब एक थोड़ा सा प्रॉब्लम को चेंज करने का तरीका देखें अगर हम इस बॉडी को वेन इट इज बींग ड्रॉप्ड फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट एक हॉरिजेंटल वेलोसिटी दे देते हैं नाउ दिस हॉरिजेंटल वेलोसिटी जो हम सेकंड फेज में प्रॉब्लम करेंगे इज नॉट गोइंग टू मेक एनी चेंज इन द वर्टिकल पार्ट ऑफ द मोशन अगर आपको याद हो ए टू डायमेंशनल मोशन इज कम्बिनेशन ऑफ टू इंडिपेंडेंट वन डायमेंशनल मोशन तो जो इसका सेकंड पार्ट होने वाला है उसमें हम यहाँ एक वेलोसिटी को इम्पार्ट करते हैं विच विल बी दॉरिजेंटल डायरेक्शन हॉरिजेंटल मोशन विल अकर इन इट्स ओन और जो वर्टिकल मोशन है दैट विल अकर ऑन इट्स ओन तो यू विल सी कि अगर दो बॉडीज एक ही पॉइंट पर ड्रॉप की जाती हैं 
with different initial horizontal velocities, the time taken to fall will remain the same. So we are expecting that when we give a more velocity here, in the horizontal direction, this path is now going to be like this. But the this path, this path, this time of fall, that's going to remain the same. Let's go to the problem and solve it. Now we have a ball is projected horizontally from the top of the tower of height 50 meter. Pehle 50 meter ka bhi, with a velocity of 5 meter per second. Now we have a horizontal velocity ki impart kiye. over the initial part. It's now change. Pehle horizontal velocity nahi thi. Now it is horizontal velocity. Calculate the time taken by ball to reach the ground. Calculate the distance from tower at which the ball hits the ground. So let's solve. The purana hamara case tha. Usme ek hi addition hai. That is, we have added a horizontal velocity. Let's solve. So now the situation is, the tower ki height wahi hai. This is 50 meter high. The ball is being projected here with an initial velocity in the horizontal direction. Isko main ux keh sakta hon, which is equal to 5 meter per second. The trajectory of the ball, ab jo iska path hoga, that path which it will follow will be like this. Jab ye missing tha, 5 meter per second, it would fall vertically downwards. So ab ye jo distance hai, this distance is going to be some distance jo ball travel karega during the time of its flight or jo tower ka base hai, usse duri par gerega. Now if we go for the two motions, vertical part of motion is again as per this relation, because vertical direction mein initial velocity has zero. So I can say ki uy is equal to zero. That means initial vertical velocity is zero. So if I say uy into t plus one by two g t square, so this mein uy ki value zero le lete hain. H becomes equal to zero into t plus one by two g t square. I can get the same answer as before. So ye banega aapke paas that t square will be equal to 2h divided by g. So I can substitute the values. I get t is equal to under root of 2 into 50 divided by 10. That way g ki value mein 10 le raun. That is root 10. Or root 10 comes out to be 3.16 seconds. Ye wahi repetition hai what we have done. Ab isme jo second part hai problem ka wye hai ki how much distance is value of r? r ki value kitni? So I can determine the value of r like this, ki r is horizontal distance, horizontal distance covered by the body. Horizontal direction mein, agar hum air resistance ko ignore karte hain, to ye jo velocity horizontal direction ki, it is a constant. That means the motion in the horizontal direction is going to be uniform motion. But for uniform motion, horizontal distance will be equal to horizontal velocity multiplied by time. That way, the vertical part of motion hai. that we have dealt with the horizontal part is the size. So, what is the horizontal velocity? That is going to remain constant equal to 5 meter per second. And how much time it is going to take? The time is 3.16 seconds. Or the distance of the cover karega, that distance will be equal to 3.16 multiplied by 5. So, 5 into 3.16 is equal to. So it comes out to be 15.80, 15.80 meters. That way, the ball will fall at a distance of 15.80 meter away from the base of the building. Earlier, when this was missing, tha, so it won't fall here. A very logical question now, which arises here is, that if we are standing on a building, we two balls. Ko एक बॉल को हमने वर्टिकली ड्रॉप किया और दूसरे बॉल को एक फोर्स देके एक इनिशियल लॉसी देके इस तरह से फॉल करवाया। यू अंडरस्टैंड कि कॉमन सेंस सम टाइम्स कंफ्यूजेस अस। वी फील कि जिस बॉल ने ज़्यादा टाइम स्पेंड किया एयर में वो शायद ज़्यादा देर लगाएगी लैंड पर लैंड पर पहुँचने Previous case and this case. When this was absent, still time taken was 3.16 seconds. Or, jab ye horizontal loss of present hai, still the time taken is 3.16 seconds. Haan. The difference is, ki jo pahla ball tha, it would touch the ground, obviously just below the point.
point of projection whereas the second ball it takes some distance from the building or from the tower jahanpuri girta hai so it is variation of this because of horizontal velocity coming this comes in jo iski horizontal distance hai wo aa jati hai vertical fall par koi asar nahi padta ab isko hum kai baar is problem ko manipulate karke kuch is tarah se bhi present karte hain this is now called as the hunter and monkey problem or sometimes a target and bullet problem hunter monkey so aapko kuch is tarah se bataya jata hai there is a monkey sitting on a tree so this is the monkey sitting on top of a tree this monkey has a hunter jo us par ek fire karta hai so here is the hunter who tries to make a target now as soon as the hunter shoots the bullet which is sure to hit the monkey monkey takes a jump downwards and that jump is a, a free fall so monkey is in the state of free fall now the question here is ki will the bullet hit the monkey or no many a times our common sense says ki bullet might shoot through while monkey has left the spot but agar air resistance ko hum fir se ignore kare or perfect free fall ho the bullet will still hit the monkey why because jo bullet ka actual path hai that path will be like this jo uska vertical fall hai the time of flight of the bullet is the time during which monkey falls to so, agar monkey fall karta hai during that time wo time hum suppose t le lete hain the distance covered by monkey downwards is h equal to 1 by 2 gt square because initially monkey was at rest or jo bullet fall kar raha hai because of gravity because gravity is independent of the mass of the body is par mass par koi dependence nahi hai bullet is lighter in mass monkey is heavier but there is no dependence of g on the mass the height fallen by bullet is again equal to 1 by 2 gt square so monkey and bullet will meet somewhere in the air agar hum monkey ki jagah ek uh, target rakhe the same answer that still the bullet will hit the target provided there is no air resistance Now this is another problem. A bomb is dropped from an aeroplane when it is at height h, just above the target. The aeroplane is moving horizontally at speed v. Calculate the distance by which bomb will miss the target. अगर आप previous problem का concept देखें, बिल्कुल वही concept यहाँ भी use होगा. But let's go for discussing it. कि इसका solution किस तरह से आएगा. We solve it now. तो situation कुछ ऐसी है that we have an aeroplane. which is dropping the bomb the bomb is dropped from this position ye iska target hai call this target as point a or jis height ke through bomb gir raha hai that height is h lekin jo is aeroplane ki apni velocity hai that horizontal velocity is given to be v so it is exactly like this ki a person stands at the top of tower and throws something with initial horizontal velocity v so you will understand ki jo free fall iska hai that is governed by this relation h is equal to 1 by 2 gt square like in the previous case kyunki initial vertical velocity jo iski hai that is zero so that way from here we will get the time this bomb is going to take to hit the ground which will be under root of 2h by g now this time is the time during which the horizontal distance is covered kyunki ab jo bomb ki trajectory hai wo ye hone wali let's say that this is the point p where actually the bomb will hit so jo actual point hai where it will hit the ground so this is the point b to so, ye distance ab hai let's call it as distance r isko kaise nikale so ab is again distance covered in the horizontal direction because of horizontal velocity so it will be equal to horizontal velocity multiplied by time horizontal velocity is v multiplied by under root of 2h by g so that way you get out of this the distance through which the bomb will miss its target and that distance will be v into under root of 2h by g we can Uh, substitute the values of h 
can substitute the value of g, we can substitute the value of v. So this again happens to be a two-dimensional motion and you should not be confusing for this velocity. Kai bar hum ye velocity iske saath associate kar dete hain. We write here this v and we write h is equal to vt plus 1 by 2 gt square. That will be wrong. Kyunki ye jo velocity hai, ye horizontal part of motion hai. Or vertical part aapko alag se deal karna padega. Later on we'll see more problem. Agar ye velocity ab ek oblique angle par ho. This velocity. Ya upward ja raha hai koi object fir throw kar raha hai. Ya agar hum chahe ki bomb should hit the target. There could be uh, something like this. Ki agar isko yahan ki taraf ek velocity di jai bomb ko. Slowly it will reach the ground at the same target. That means just for hum intention lagate hain. Usi par ho ja ke hit karega. But right now in this case this is your answer. Given the values of V, H and G you can solve the problem.